I'm delighted that so many people can come today. And I think, I mean, how many of you, is this their first time? For how many of you is this the first time you've been here? Can you put your hands up? Put them right up, sorry. So I'd say nearly half, probably about half, maybe a bit more. And it's a very uh, strange, funny building. It's unlike any other building in the world. And what I'm going to say is that because it looks the way it is, it's quite intimidating. Um, it feels foreign. And it feels very uh, alien. It's not something that you would see every day in life. Uh, it's not something that you're familiar with. Now, you know, I was, uh, as your um, chairman said, I went to Eton, I got a scholarship there, I, got, I went to Cambridge. In those sort of places, there are lots of buildings like this, okay? So people from that sort of uh, background who are exposed to that have a familiarity with this kind of setup, which makes it easier for them in many ways to relate to this kind of environment. And what I would say to you is, there's no, there's no mystery about this. Um, if you can come here, as you have done today, and come again, I would keep coming here till it's utterly familiar. I mean, it won't be completely familiar, it takes years and years and years. But I think what we have to understand as a, an immigrant community, as a, um, a new community to Britain, is that these institutions are here for us as well. There's no kind of barrier. I mean, there's no, there's no thing saying, it's not like apartheid South Africa or those old days where you say you can't come in. Anyone can come in here. And the problem is, is actually, I think, in the mentality in a lot, lot of our communities where we think we're cut off. And I was hoping uh, Diane Abbott will come uh, uh, you know, soon and, and, and share the panel because I was 12 years old when she got elected to parliament in 87. And that was the first um, black, the first black MPs uh, in British history, you know, all these hundreds of years that this parliament and all the rest of it has been going on. Um, Diane Abbott was among the first uh, uh, you know, black woman, I think she was the very first black woman uh, to be an MP and she's, you know, as a historical um, fact, she has done an incredible amount uh, for the community. And I remember looking at uh, the te television in the 1987 election when uh, Paul Boateng, uh, Diane Abbott, Bernie Grant all got elected. And I remember thinking, you know, this is a landmark. Even though I was only 12, that was a landmark. And it, was, it kind of inspired me in a way. And I think now we've made some progress as a, as a you know, new communities to Britain. We have made some progress. There's still a long way to go. I'm not saying there's anything, um, you know, we're in the land of milk and honey or anything like that. But I think the most important thing that you can take away from this, uh, this event is the fact that you've been to Parliament, you've been to one of the old uh, committee rooms. This is... Um, you know, lots of important business. I think the Finance Committee, I sat here. Uh, lots and lots of th historic uh, uh, things have happened here. You've been here, you've felt comfortable, I hope. You've been well looked after. And you've got to feel that this is somewhere, something that you, you can access. Because it's been built a long time ago and people come and go. If you're in Britain, this is the centre of government and you've got to become very, very familiar with it. And once you've done that, then you can start thinking about making a contribution. You can think, start thinking about you know, putting your hand up and saying, I'm going to stand for council, or I'm going to get into, involved in local politics. And it's very funny, because my mother, I mean, she's nearly 70 years old, and she came to Britain from Ghana in 1962, which is a long time, I can't, what, 51 years? I can't, can't she keeps telling me anyway how long it is. <laughs> and for, some, for someone like her, I think even standing as a councillor would have been a huge deal. She was really, not intimidated, she was always a conservative, very church-going, Methodist, she got involved in that. But she was always slightly intimidated, if you like. And for someone like me, who's a generation younger, I've never been intimidated. I've always thought, right, that's something I want to do, and I walk into it and do it. And I think there's too much of that intimidation, too much of that um, sense of not belonging, uh, that, that is holding people back. And what I say to you is, you know, come here, do internships, uh, come to debates, come to get in touch with your MP, come and see your MP here, and get very, very familiar physically with this environment. And once you've done that, and it's in your head, in terms of politics, you, 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 will, you will feel very familiar and you will feel emboldened and empowered actually to get involved. And there are lots of barriers. There's quaint language, there's quaint clothes and all that stuff, but that's all superficial. You know, if you want to represent your communities, if you want to actually try and engage in public uh, life, it's for you, you can do that. And, and the only thing holding you back is your own uh, sort of mental attitude, if you like. Mm. And that's, that, that's the one message I want to get across uh, to, to, to black students. 
um, that you know you must feel familiar with this. You must feel that this is a place for you, even though there's lots of external stuff that might put you off. That is all irrelevant. And I have to say that when um, Bernie Grant and Diane Abbott and um, uh, Paul Boateng came here, um, it was a national event in 1987. I mean, I remember that. And uh, in their way, they made an impact on people like David Lammy uh, subsequently. I am, uh, came in in 2010. I'm probably less engaged a lot with uh, community issues, not because I don't want to, but because the constituency I represent um, is, is, is quite a white community. I mean, that's just a fact of um, you know, the, the, the people I represent. So I try and engage with their issues. But I always, always say to uh, students from, uh, with backgrounds from Africa, the Caribbean, Asia, that um, you have to get, you know, we have to get over the barrier uh, that we set up in our own mind. Um, and that's what Diane Abbott uh, and those pioneers did 25 years ago. I mean, if you think about what Diane Abbott did, she went to Cambridge in the 70s, she came from an ordinary background, I think she grew up in North London, uh, and she came here in 1987, which is, you know, 26 years ago. And that was a whole generation, you know, black woman coming to Parliament, that was a big deal. And I think it's remarkable what, um, you know, the progress that we've made. And there's no reason, given that, you know, Diane Abbott came into Parliament in 1987, there's no reason why a number of you can't, uh, you know, in the next 10, 15, maybe 20 years, uh, make an equal contribution. And, and you must feel that, um, that it's open. Because let me tell you one thing. I mean, in, from my side of the Conservative Party, before 2005, there were no black MPs. The whole parliamentary party, you used to see, I think it was only 10% women, 90% white men. And that was when I got onto the list. I wanted to be a Tory MP, even though there were, there were no role models, there was no one. I just said, that's what I want to do, and nothing is going to hold me back. And it was difficult. It was very difficult. And I'm sure that um, some of the experience I went through in the Conservative Party, Diane Abbott, certainly as a woman in the Labour Party in the 80s, she would have gone through similar experiences. But my, what I'm saying to you, finally, is that a lot of people have done the work. You know, a lot of people, you, know, you see black MPs now on the Conservative side, and on the, um, particularly on the Labour side, you see women uh, participating. And for your generation, for people coming up, there's no limit, really, I think, um, to what you can achieve. And you've always got to have that at the back of your mind. And all this external stuff, the, the, the clothes that they wear, the speaker, um, the clerks, all of that is irrelevant. Um, it's about representing communities and giving a voice, your own voice, your smart, uh, and motivated people, and giving your own voice and making that contribution. Um, I'll just finish off with a few remarks about the current uh, environment we're getting into. The European elections are going to be very uh, interesting. Uh, clearly, you've heard a lot about UKIP, um, you know, who are a very interesting outfit. I mean, I'm not quite sure how well they're going to do. The, the market, the people seem to think they're going to do quite well. And obviously, in 2015, we will be in a very tight general election race. I think the Conservative Party and the Labour Party will, be, will end up very, very close in terms of the number of the votes. No one is going to get a big blowout majority like we had in 97 or in the 80s. It's not like that. So, as voters, as young people with a, a, a vote, with a voice, you can really contribute uh, in that election in terms of, you know, if you want to contribute as activists in, the mar in marginal seats for whichever party. I'm not asking you what party you, you support or anything like that. But whichever way, I think it'll be a very interesting election to get involved in.